Hello there, Riderplex Nation. Steve Urban here with more career advice and job interviewing tips for you. And as a quick reminder, if you enjoy our podcast, please remember to subscribe to our channel and like the episodes. And on today's podcast, I have my good friend and mentor, J.P. O'Brien, the managing partner of Black Lab Sports and CEO of Ice Black. J.P., how you doing? Hey, Steve. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. How are you? Oh, hey, I'm doing great. Now that you've you've called in, I really appreciate uh, you being a guest on the show. I've been dying to get you dying to get you on here. You've been such a great mentor for me and a supporter of Rider Flex. And, you know, you just have so much experience with startups and and uh, interviewing and mentoring and guiding people. So appreciate you calling in. You want to tell the uh, listeners just kind of a little bit about yourself? Give us an overview. Sure. You know, I, I live here in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, we moved out here in 99. And I think to myself, you know, as kind of a serial entrepreneur, um, I started my first company in 98, an internet company. I sold that. I uh, started an investment bank, uh, actually in Denver. Um, started another software company in 2003. So I've just kind of, for me, I love the forming stages of companies. Mm. Um, I've got, uh, Great family, feel very blessed about that. Two kids in high school. Um, most weekends, you'll find my wife and I running through the uh, trails of the foothills here with my dogs, and so uh, that's kind of that's a little bit about me. You know, you've been so successful uh, in your life so far professionally. What are some of the key contributors to uh, your success? You think over the years. <laughs> Yeah, I think success is on the ivy the holder a little bit. I appreciate that. You know, I, I, I um, listen. I, I think that, man. I think we look at I look at things maybe a little bit differently. Um, you know, especially now, I think about success in kind of three areas. One is uh, around this concept of purpose. You know, do you understand what your purpose is in life, and are you able to live it? And if you are, I think you're already way ahead of the game. Um, the second is your, your health, because if you don't have your health, you, it doesn't really matter. And so where are you from your health perspective? And again, if you have that, uh, you're, you're probably in a great starting spot. Um, and then the last is wealth. And, and that can come in, you know, riches, but usually it's not cash um, that where people will start to really understand success. And so when I think about that, that's my priorities these days is, you know, do I have my health? Do I have my purpose? And do I feel that I've got, uh, you know, rich, meaningful work and, and relationships around me? Mm-hmm. On the purpose piece, by the way, if you've listened to uh, some of my podcasts, I, I, I stole your question. Just so you know, I stole that one. Uh, I've been asking, I know. I know. I've, been a- <laughs> I've been asking some of the guests, you know, what their core purpose is. I think it's such an awesome question. And by the way, I use that during interviews all day long here at RiderFlex. It's a great one. Most people stumble on it and really can't answer it. And you're right. It's just so important to understand what that purpose is. And you, you pushed me on that, which I really, really appreciate. And I think it, I think it helped guide me as, as Rider Flex was set up. Um, you know, we, we talk a lot about career advice on this podcast. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you a little bit different, different than maybe some of the other guests Let's talk about people in transition in their life or people thinking mm-hmm. about think, thinking about the next move in their life, whether it's they're thinking about a, a new job or maybe they're thinking about a different industry or maybe they're thinking about starting their own company. They're in some sort of transition. Um, can you go a little a little, you know, go deep there a little bit and just talk about what what advice you would give uh, people in transition? You know. I think it's, I think we're at a really interesting time. Um, you know, transition used to be this midlife crisis thing or some kind of major event, to, you know, death of a parent or, um, or a loved one, or maybe, you know, you left a job. But I think that more and more, just about everybody around me and I'm running into feels like they're in some kind of transition or wants to be in transition. They're not, they're not necessarily happy, um, with where they're at. And I think it has to do, a lot with this core purpose piece, like they're searching for what's really going to, you know, make them f- feel fulfilled and, and be happy. And so, um, 
you know, when I see people that are in transition, a lot of times the first thing, you know, you see this all the time. The first thing is like, Hey, I'm looking for a new job, right? That's the transition piece. Mm -hmm. I think it's the most, I think it's a phenomenal time to take the step back and really ask yourself, um, what's the most important thing to me and go down that core purpose search. Think about that. And, and I've talked to people a lot of times about when they're going down that kind of discovery path and doing some of that internal searching, um, you know, it's kind of like not what's most important now, but what's ultimately important, you know, what's ultimately important to you. If you had everything in the world or you had nothing in the world in either situation, ultimately what's most important to you. And once you really figure that out, two things happen. I think one is you will have resilience every single day, regardless of the kind of short term outcomes to get up and want to be part of that meaningful work. And so it's not even, and, and why not like figure that out so that every day is beautiful and you're like, man, it didn't matter if yesterday sucked, it was perfect. <laughs> like you're excited about going into that meaningful work. Right. Um, right. And so it builds a sense of grit and resili resilience that uh, is really interesting. And then the other thing that happens is because you have a good grit and resilience, I think the gift you get is to then allow yourself to be creative and be vulnerable and take chances that you might not have normally taken because um, you feel like you have that resilience and that grit. And it doesn't matter the short term, again, results. What matters is this long term ultimate uh, what you're working on. So mm -hmm. I would I recommend anyone who's in transition to take the step back. Um, you may still have to kind of get a job or kind of make some cash flow for yourself, but take a step back and think about ultimately what's most important to you. Um, once you figure that out, I think your perspective on life changes a lot. Again, um, you know what you want to be doing. Boy, what you just described are all of the the feelings and emotions and things that I personally went through uh, starting RiderFlex. You're so right. It feels different. Different once you've once you've found something that truly makes you happy and it's your purpose. It, it it's just a completely different feeling uh, every single day when you get up. And I I actually feel sorry for people. You know, they're driving into work every single day, hating their lives or hating their commute, and it just doesn't have to be that way. Let me ask you this on on startups. Regarding startups, you've been very successful doing that yourself and you've given given a ton of advice uh, on that and you've mentored so many people. I mean, you're doing it every day over at Black Lab Sports. For the listeners on this podcast, is there one or two, you know, points you'd like to make or, or pieces of advice you'd like to give on, on starting your own company uh, or starting a business? Maybe it's, maybe it's, you know, Hey, make sure you do this or maybe you could even talk about, uh, you know, the, the scariest moment for you or the biggest hurdle and how you got over that, something with, with startups. Well, sure. I think it's, I think right now startups is like this, there's a little bit of a, um, <laughs> the grass is greener book. Like people think, oh right. yeah, I want to start my own company. And it's, <laughs> I mean, it's not easy, right? So if you think it's just going to be fast money or you're going to sell your company or, um, the, the quick answer is no. And so I tell a lot of people like, don't do a startup. Um, it's, it's, you know, I think that, I think, so then people who say, well, I really want to do a startup. The question is why, why not just do what you love to do with another person or another company or something that's already existing? Mm -hmm. Um, because I think a startup by default has all these things against them. They don't have scale. They don't have resources. Um, they don't have a team. They don't, they don't have all these things. Um, I think what's different about a startup though, is that if you are, if you if you found really what's like the most important thing and the startup mechanism allows you to go and build, you know, and drive that service or that product. And, and, um, well, that to me is a really powerful combination because now all of a sudden you've got, oh, you know, I do believe that the leaders of the future are going to be, um, people who are starting companies and, um, are figuring out ways to you know, innovate and to drive value at a humanitarian level. Um, I think that, in, you know, five years from now, we're going to look back and be like, man, that is the new workforce. Mm -hmm. um, but today, I think that the hardest thing that people are coming up to is that, like, you know, we're investors. And so a lot of times a, a new founder will come up to me and be like, hey, I just want, you know, 
a hundred thousand dollars for this project and or a million dollars. Right. And you're like, okay, well what's, where's, what's the revenue or what, you know, and I just don't think that they have these concepts of really what it takes to, you know, to drive revenue and the work that's being done and investors, frankly, are not people that are um, here to pay your salary, right? We're trying to help kind of a go-to-market launch. And so there's, I think there's a big disconnect with most people around startups and, um, and what that means. Now, I would tell people who feel like they're entrepreneurial to go, go find uh, an amazing other entrepreneur who's maybe in the middle of a startup and launching something and help that person. Mm. I think you learn a ton. Right. I think you learn a ton. And it might, you might not make money, but you can learn a ton and find out if that's an environment you want to, you know, work, you know, work in going forward. And again, if the idea is invest a little bit of time now, you know, a year, half a year, well, that's a little bit of time. So you know what you can be spending the rest of your time on, you know, 40, mm-hmm. 50, 60, 70 years, whatever it is. Well, that's great advice. That's a great tip on partnering with a, with a fellow entrepreneur. I love that. Uh, let's do this on this podcast. We, we do a lot of, uh, you know, job interviewing and job seeker advice. I think we often forget about tips for the hiring managers themselves because we're always speaking to the job seeker. We've done a few podcasts for hiring managers, but, but not a ton. That's something you're really good at mentoring those type of folks. What, you know, for, for this recording, what would be, a recommendation you would give a hiring manager regarding the setup of their company or or their process to attract and and find the best talent these days yeah that's a good one i think i um i was on a panel steve recently for the i think it was the outdoor industry and and this person next to me who had um she had a pretty cool company. She is, she was doing basically hydration bottles and, and, um, and she was complaining that there was no workforce that she couldn't find qualified workers. Um, you know, how do I find that salesperson? You know, how do I find my next CFO? And, and, um, and I said, I said, wait a minute, you're in the outdoor industry. You know, you're about hydration. How are you having trouble finding people to come and work for you? Right. And, and I realized, yeah. And I realized, um, and it wasn't a number, you know, just like, you know, the answer is going to be here. It's not the numbers, you know, it wasn't that she was way underpaying. Um, it wasn't that she was posting on the wrong boards. I mean, she should have been using Riderflex, of course, but um, <laughs> really, really the problem was that she was not setting up a culture that attracted people. So, right. you know, I, I grabbed her afterwards and I said, listen, you've got an amazing opportunity, but you have to broadcast your culture. Don't try to like, don't try to say, uh, like evaluate people at this point, broadcast your culture. Hey, here's what we're about. Here's, you know, we're about hydration, the outdoors and hiking, and that's our passion. And then you're going to attract people that already have that passion to come to work for you. And mm-hmm. some of those people will have the skills that fill those roles. Um, and so I think that, I think that hiring managers have to today more than ever, I mean, partially because of what we just talked about, right? The startup mm-hmm. phenomenon, like everyone wants to be their own right. because that seems cool and fun. Right. You have to make, if you want entrepreneurial people, be an entrepreneurial company, have the culture of that. What does that mean? You know, you have to kind of out, start to outline um, what it would mean for your company that day in and day out, actually act that way. Then you'll start to attract, the, you know, the people that fit that. And I don't think you'll have, difficulty finding the right people. That's really great advice, JP. And you're, you're absolutely right. I just talked to somebody about that today. In fact, you know, that's why people call you, right? They call and they say, Hey, I want to be part of black lab sports, right? They, it's because of that culture that you drive over there. Um, I think, I think it's the same for us here at RiderFlex. We, we will get C level type candidates call and say, Hey, I want to be part of RiderFlex. Like I just want, I just want to be part of it. And I think, I think you're mm-hmm. right. It's it's all about making sure you're communicating that culture. People grab onto that, and and then they just want to be part of it. And and sometimes they don't even care how much money they're making, or they're flexible on how much money they're making because they want to be part of the culture. Great, great advice. Are are there? You've interviewed I don't know how many people in your life. Are there a couple of favorite questions you like to ask, or you know, candidates when you're talking to them? Well, apparently, you've already stolen one of mine. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> the cor- 
core Go purpose. Ahead. And I think that one's really telling because I'll, I'll give you one more hint on that one uh, for if, if, you know, if, if you're a hiring manager and if you're listening to this and it resonates for you to say, hey, does that person's purpose match our culture? Um, typically, hires aren't done overnight. So what I do is the next time I meet up with somebody, I'll ask them again. Oh, by the way, I know you were working on that core purpose. Did you figure that out? And if they haven't even, if their answer is, oh, yeah, 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 you thanks for the reminder. I'm going to go do that. They're probably just not ready for, for you um, if you want to drive that. Whereas if they really did the homework and, and sat down and went through it, because it's a really hard process. It's not simple. Um, so that's one of them. I think another one, I love the Morgan question, you know, you know, if you could do anything over in your career, what would it be and why and what would you do definitely? Um, okay. Yeah, and I think probably the last one is, um, you know, I, I kind of like the, if, if you kind of explore with them, you know, we're, well, I guess this is maybe just for me, but we, we try to work with people who we call thinker doers, people who want to create the future in one way or another. That could be in technology, that could be in athletics, could be in art, could be in media. It could be in software, it doesn't matter. And so when we're talking about that future, I kind of ask them to paint it for me. And what is that, you know, paint out the picture, paint out the little movie script for me. Like, tell me what you see. And I like to watch people, how they handle that in person, their body language, how do they start to engage in that? Do they kind of get lost in that? Do they, it's just kind of how they engage with that future thinking. Um, that's been really helpful for me. That's great. You know, the core purpose thing, just to touch on that one more time, I know we've mentioned it a few times for the listeners, just so everybody knows, JP, you, you hit me with that question a couple of years ago. I remember I was, I stumbled on it like most people do. Just so you know, I don't even know if I've shared this with you. I drove home that day and I, I walked in and my wife was making dinner and she looks at me and she, she says, what's wrong? What's wrong? You, you look frustrated. And I said, yeah, I'm frustrated. I'm almost 50 years old. I don't know what my core purpose is. <laughs> and so it really ca caused me to, you know, concentrate on that and, and, and work on it over the next few weeks. And so it, it really did a bunch for me. Are there on the, on the job seekers, one more question there. Are there a couple of routine mistakes you see people make when they're interviewing or maybe even when they're applying? Is there just like, like you're just thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, I see this all the time. Key, key mistakes they make in the interview process. Yeah. So if you're talking about more senior, senior folks here, um, well, I, I guess I had a, I had a couple meetings uh, last week and, and you can kind of see the, the major differences, you know, one where the person really came in and, and um, try to dominate almost will dominate the conversation to the point where mm -hmm. um, they were selling so hard that there was no chance for us to kind of bond or kind of play or kind of just, just explore together. You know, it was, they, they had to make sure that they, they were convincing me of their position versus uh, this woman who came in and we were talking. And while she wanted to tell me about herself and, and how well she was, you know, what she had done and successfully and pr very proud of it, she was also willing to kind of explore different areas, um, again, around the future thinking and around, you know, how she had made mistakes or what she would do differently. Or, and, and I think being a little bit vulnerable, I mean, that's work, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you show up and try to be perfect, it, I think it's a turnoff for most hiring managers. Whereas if you show up and you're, and you're vulnerable enough to say, yeah, I'm human, but, I'm, but I want to be part of that kind of uh, dance, to me, it, well, to me, that's very important. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the number one mistake I see uh, uh, executives make during an, inter an interview, especially C-level folks. Mm -hmm. Biggest mistake they make, they come in way too cocky. They're not humble enough. And, mm -hmm. and it's like you said, it's just a complete turnoff. That, that's my biggest piece of advice for, for executives is, listen, just, just be humble. Don't, don't walk, in, walk in acting like you know everything or be super cocky. I see that all the time. And in some cases it's because they're, they have this, they're def somewhat defensive because they're pissed off. They're having to interview for another job anyway, at this stage in their life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I see that. Yeah, we a lot. say it, we, we love confidence, right? We just don't like the ego. So right. it's like, be confident in your thing. But if someone challenges you, don't, 
you know, don't be defensive, be super curious. Well, why? How did that person have that perspective? We call it, you know, I think, you know, other people call it the beginner's mind. Um, and I think that's a really, really smart way to, you know, enter those conversations. Really good advice. JP, when you look back now, all the things you've experienced so far in life, would you give any particular advice to your 21 year old self? If you could talk to that young man. <laughs> um, well, besides the stocks um, tips. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh, that's a good one. I think, you know, I think it goes back to this purpose thing. You know, I, I was really lucky. I, I, I you know, I was, I was as ambitious as a young professional um, you know, I got to play sports in college. I, I still play sports. I got to do all sorts of really fun. So I've been really privileged, you know, blessed, I would say, you know, on the stuff that I was able to experience. Started my first company very, very young. Um, I mean, I was, I was 25, right? So at 21, I was always thinking about that. And um, I think, though, that when I look back at it, um, I was still only reading from, like, what was put in front of me. So I kind of look at it like this, like I was like, I was opening this book, this choose your own adventure book and it, you know, and it said, okay, if you want to slay the dragon, go to page 52. If you want to marry the princess, go to page 78. Right. <laughs> and I was picking the page and then I would go to the next thing. And I, and so things would show up in my life and I would choose a direction. And I thought that was choice or that was creation. When I realized later, which was I can actually throw that book away and I can script out actually what I want it to be myself. I don't have to pick someone else's kind of choices. And I think that if I was to tell my 20 year old self, I'd say, Hey, take a step back, you know, no rush. Um, think about this. Don't, don't, don't do anything like go explore and find the best people to work with and find the best technology that interests you and, um, go travel a lot and eat good food and all those things. But, um, I think I would probably tell myself like, Hey, pull your head up and, and look around. Cause realize that everything and this is a Steve Jobs quote. So this is not me, but Steve Jobs said, you know, if you look around, everything around you, the walls, the, the roads, the cars, the spaceships, everything around you was designed and created by people no smarter than you and I. And once you live in an environment and live in that mindset, that's a pretty, pretty fun place to be. Mm. Great stuff. Uh, JP, how about this real quick? I want to make sure we get this out there. So Black Lab Sports, a venture, venture capital firm, I, correct? And, and can you just tell the listeners just a little bit more there? We didn't get a chance to talk about it up front. You know, what Black Lab Sports does and maybe, you know, if somebody happens to be listening to this and they want to contact Black Lab. And then also, if you don't mind, the other awesome company you've created, Ice Black, just can you touch that, touch on that and the product itself and how you would, you know, go about purchasing that or finding that? Sure. So Black Lab Sports um, is this crazy idea <laughs> that, that I came up with about five years ago when I figured out my core purpose. Um, and I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a catalyst, an environment where we could allow future thinker doers to create the future that they saw was going to be beautiful. Um, and, so we are venture capitalists. We invest in companies that 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 are developing technology in the human performance, uh, human potential, and human connectedness space. Mm. Um, and we built this. Uh, we took a warehouse in Boulder, Colorado. We converted it to a part high tech hub, part human performance lab, where we can test technologies. And we've got a bunch of athletes, pro athletes, as part of that, and mentors and investors. And uh, we just brought in regenerative medicine. So we working on everything from cryotherapy and IV therapy and stem cell therapy. And so we're trying to put together all these modalities around, again, the kind of our thesis. Um, so if you want, if you're interested, it's blackhopsports.com. Take a read about it. Uh, I think what we're working on is really meaningful and, and the people, uh, you know, we're trying to create an amazing culture. So, um, that's really fun. Um, ice black was actually the very first company that we built and launched. And it's a, uh, basically a sports performance body care company. You know, at the time I had very young, uh, kids and we were putting basically, you know, poison on their skin during their sport events. Um, and I'm like, what are we doing here? So we realized that we could create actually a healthy version of these products. Um, and, um, and then, you know, being bolder, make, you know, very organic or very healthy, no harmful chemicals inside these products, but yet be the highest performing for athletes. Uh, and that product is called Ice Black and it's, it's I-S-P-L-A-C-K.com. 
and all kinds of athletes are using that right now. I don't know if you're allowed to mention any of those on this podcast. Maybe not. I don't know how all those the legalities. Oh, sure. there, yeah, but no, I, go ahead. You know, our, 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 um, our very first product was actually uh, an under eye kind of eye black product. So the thing that reduces uh, glare from the sun and we made it in multiple colors so that fans could get all decked out in color as well. Right. Uh, but yeah, so all the NFL football teams use us, MLB teams use us. So everything from the pros all the way down to, you know, Johnny and T-ball and, you know, um, flag football or uh, it's a cross. And so that, so that's, that was our very first product set. And then um, as entrepreneurs do, we launched additional products and now we've got face wipes and body wipes and we have a sunscreen and deodorant and anti-chafe. And so the idea is for any athlete that's aspiring out there to, to kind of do their best. Um, what we say is, you know, just go for it. We got, we got you covered. You know, for those people listening, I just, I hope that this is really registering. So just think about that for a minute, Mr. And Mrs. Listener. JP has an idea to, uh, to initially launch a better, I guess in layman's terms, a better eye paint uh, for, for athletes. And you would think to yourself, oh, gosh, that's already out there, right? Oh, that's already in stores. There's, there's plenty of those around. And, and you, not only do you launch that, but it's successful. You have professional, famous professional athletes using it and, and sports teams, and now you have additional SKUs. Just so the listener understands, that is a major accomplishment considering – I just talked to you about that. How long has it been? Was it been three years or, or four years? I can't remember. Yeah. Three and a half years. I, I I remember you telling me saying you saying hey I got this I got this idea and I remember thinking okay well I don't know is that going to work and <laughs> it sure has you've really congratulations on what you've built there really just outstanding I mean not only do you have to have the vision but just the guts to be able to do that most people just can't step out and do that and really um, great job um, I'm really happy for you by the way well, you know you. I wanted to say this too. I think a lot of people listening to this, they, they won't know. You just give back so much with your time, right? All these things you've done, you've always had this mentality to just help and to just give back. And and, and oftentimes you're doing it uh, for, for no fee or anything, anything, you know, to try to get back something your way or whatever. You're just helping. And, and I think you've always kind of had this mentality, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you've had this philosophy that, hey, if I – if I give and I just do the right thing, things for people, you know, good stuff's going to come back my way. You carry yourself that way, and you've always been a huge supporter of ours. And, you know, every time I've ever picked up the phone or sent you a text and said, holy crap, I got some stuff going down. I need to, I need some advice. I mean, you're just always there for, for me and for Rider Flex, and I want to say thank you. It really means a lot. And uh, I, I think so many other people should be following that example. It's so important to just remember that. If you just do the right thing, if you just – you know, help people and, and, and try to give them input and mentor them. Good stuff will come back your way. Well, sir, I could keep you well, on. Thanks, the Steve. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think the, I think we need to do that more, right? We have a, our culture here is pretty, pretty set up. We have a no assholes policy and a give first philosophy. And I think give first, give um, first. Yep. whatever, whatever yours is, whatever your, uh, you know, policy and philosophy is, but live it. And, and I think um, you'll attract people like that. I really appreciate you being on, sir. Thank you so much, JP. Great stuff. Thanks for calling in. Fun, Steve. Thanks. Happy holidays yep. and uh, look forward to getting together soon. Yeah, all the best. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. All right. And there, folks, is your Rider Flex tip of the day from my good friend, JP O'Brien from Boulder, Colorado. We truly hope you find our material helpful and entertaining. And in the spirit of giving back, Rider Flex donates half of all proceeds gained from this podcast to the Volunteers of America and their efforts to support veterans with employment services. You can become a supporter of this podcast, by the way, by visiting Anchor FM. That's anchor.fm slash riderflex. And as always, you can send us your questions or suggested topics and we'll help in any way we can. Our email is podcast at riderflex.com or drop us a voicemail at 888-964-5876, extension 710. Visit riderflex.com to learn more about us 
Thanks so much for listening, folks, and have a wonderful day.